Praise the Lord. It's already 3.10. So we'll finish it off, maybe 15-20 minutes. The Lord may help us to, to strengthen each and every one of us through His Word. The Lord may speak to us through His Word. For today's word, let's uh, turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45. We'll read from verses 1. One to five. We'll read it responsibly. Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 5. We'll read it responsibly. <clears throat> then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And then there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the father of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph, that my father yet live. And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you, and that you come near, came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into, into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Let's look to the Lord. Our gracious God, loving Holy Father, Lord, once again we come to Thee. Thank You, Lord, for this time that You have given to us. Thank You, Lord, for the word that You brought before us, Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 5. Lord, speak to us, Father, open our hearts, open our minds, open our understanding that we may hear Thy still small voice. And also, Lord, as I commit myself unto Thee, Father, that I may not speak of my own, that I may speak of thy word alone, let thy words be put into my mouth. Come take every one of us into thy hands, Father. Come take this time into thy hands. Ask in these few things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Everyone knows the story of Joseph, right? <laughs> every one of us, we do know the story of Joseph. And there are many Josephs in the world. Right? There are many. Joseph's in the world, but I don't know how much they know about Joseph. Right? All the Josephs. I don't know how much they know about really about Joseph. <laughs> right? But everywhere, especially in America, everybody's called Joe. Joseph means Joe. Right? They call Joe, Joe, all these things. There are, there's so many. There is a very familiar name. Right? The Joseph is a very familiar name all over the world. Now here, let's see, let's, look at, let's see here. Now this, uh, his brethren, they sold him to the Egyptians. Right, uh, the Ishmaelites actually, the farmers. And then they sold him to the Potiphar, right, uh, as a slave. And he was in the house of Potiphar, and then God blessed him there. And then he's become now the topmost of the entire Egypt, right? And he's become next to Pharaoh. And he's become the governor of the Pharaoh. And Lord blessed him for such a reason, and for such a thing. And uh, God's ways are different. The way he does things is very different. We cannot understand how the, the Lord does things. Now we're not going to go to the, all that story, but the story here, the thing that we hear is, now what happens in the land of Canaan, there was famine where Israel, Jacob was there, and the, all the other brethren were there, and even Benjamin, his own brother, Joseph's brother, was also there. And all of them, there was famine in the land of Canaan. And now, uh, Joseph is in Egypt, now he's the king, and he's just uh, next to Pharaoh, it's almost like Pharaoh. All things that were there in his hands. Now then, because of the famine, this brethren comes to Egypt. When they come back to Egypt, now they, are, they stand before his brother now. They had to look. But uh, Joseph recognizes uh, the brother then, but they didn't recognize him. And this is what the story that is happened here, what uh, we are saying here. 
from verse chapter 45 verses 1 through 5 certain things just a few thoughts that we see from there and then we'll close i'm not going to go into detail on anything because of the time just a little few things that we will see from here and then how the lord love what the lord wants to speak to us from these verses and then we'll close here so now we'll see from verse 1 Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried, "Cause every man to go out from 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 me, right?" And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. Look at the scene that are there. There are many people that are there, even his brethren there. But he told all the people to get away from him, right? Just to tell, told them to leave them alone. And then they, when they left them alone, and now Joseph and only his brethren that are there. Then what happened? And he wept aloud. Ah, and he wept aloud. Ah. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. Ah, and he wept aloud. And then who heard? The Egyptians and the Pharaoh heard that he wept. He must be surprised. The Pharaoh must be surprised. What's going on with him? Who are these people? What is what is he all about? Right? He he might not have, he might not understood what what was going on there. Then what happened? The next. And Joseph said unto his brethren. And Joseph said unto his brethren. I am Joseph. Ah. Doth my father yet live? Ah. And Joseph said unto his brethren, What is he saying? Doth my father. I am Joseph. Right. Joseph said unto his brethren that I am Joseph. You understand? Why he has to say that? Huh? He's trying to recollect, re- re- reassure them that he is Joseph. He's bringing, bringing the word reassurance. They, these brethren, might be thinking that he's an Egyptian, he's a king, he's a pharaoh. But one thing you need to understand: I am Joseph. Don't forget that I am your brother Joseph. I'm your brother Joseph. I am Joseph. You know what I'm trying? Why I'm trying to say this? Why I'm bringing this thought to you? It doesn't matter what, where we stand. It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter what kind of personality. As the days go by, who, what we become in this world. But never forget where you come from, where you stand, where the Lord kept you, how the Lord has kept you. Never forget. You should understand who you are. We all need to understand who we are as we are. Then only everyone else. Can understand who we are. Kada, many of us we change ourselves, especially when we come to America. Go on. But when you go to India, you behave like American. Kada, all speaking only English. No Telugu, nothing. They're gone. Forget it. Don't change yourself. Doesn't matter where you are. What you are, spiritually speaking, spiritually speaking, once you are a child of God, you are a child of God. That's it. Nobody can change that. Once you are saved and once God has redeemed you, you must be. You must recognize yourself as the child of God. God may bring you to any certain extent in your life. God may bring any kind of blessing in your life. God will bring anything that is of this world into your life, but never forget that the Lord has saved you, that He has redeemed you, that you are the child of God. Many of us forget. Many of us forget who we are. Many of us forget when we, when the riches of this world, when the glory of this world, when the things of this world, when we come into our jobs, when we work and all the things, and then forgetting God. Right, but here Joseph says, "I am Joseph. Don't think that I am Pharaoh. Don't think that I am to have their authority. That I am something else. But you must remember that I am Joseph. I am that same Joseph. It is me, dear brother, and remember, it is me. I have the same feelings. I cry. I cry. Look at them. He says, he told all the people to get away from him." Tell them to leave, leave them, leave them alone. Then what happened? Look at them. What is he saying? Yeah. And Joseph said unto his brethren, "I am Joseph." Yeah. 
that my father yet live uh -huh. and his brethren could not answer him ah uh -huh, look at that they are confused now right what is this who is this man they couldn't recognize him at all they couldn't recognize him who is this man what is this man is asking about my father our father does that my father live that my father live and then what happened go, go ahead for they were troubled at his presence ah look at this for they were troubled at his presence they are so troubled at his presence because the world is still in them because the guilt is still in them the guilt of selling his own brother the guilt of selling his own brother to the midianites or the ishmaelites the guilt is still in them and that's why they were so troubled in their heart they so troubled and then what is next then what happened and joseph said unto his brethren and joseph said unto his brethren come near to me ah uh -huh. what is he saying look at the love that he has for his brethren come near to me dear brethren come near to me don't worry about it what you have done it is not you for god is own purpose and plan in his own wisdom he had done this it is not that you have to worry it is not that i have to worry it is the love of god towards you and me there are many things that we face in our lives there are many things that we face situations we, we face in our lives but one thing we need to understand god knows it all the lord knows it all doesn't matter what we go through in our lives doesn't matter what the problems are in our lives doesn't matter it may feel like they're leaving you alone it may feel like they they put you aside it may feel like that just uh, they are good for nothing but still the lord says god has the, god knows what we go through god knows every situation of our life and why we are going through he is making the way so that he may bless us in the due time in, in due time the lord may bring the blessing in due time we cannot understand what god is doing in our lives but his plans are very different his plans are awesome his plans are amazing he molds us in such a way because to correct us because to mold us because to put us straight he makes us go through certain situations and then he shows his blessing he shows that's what it happened here and this brother and they were so troubled in their heart they couldn't understand what's going on they read the next verse one and joseph said unto his brethren come near to me i pray you ah come near to me i pray you and they came near and they came here ah. and he said ah. i am joseph your brother again he says i am joseph your brother ah who me sold in egypt ah now he's now he's no he's making them to remember what they done whom you sold them in egypt then the next verse right there now therefore be hmm? not grieved ah now therefore be not grieved not angry with yourselves not angry with yourselves Ah, that you sold me hither, yes. For God did send me before you. Ah, for God did send me before you. To preserve life. To preserve life. God's plans are to preserve lives. No matter what you go through in your life, there may be troubles that you face. There are certain situations that we face, but God does it to preserve life. God does it to preserve life. Are the good people good to solve? God makes us to go through certain problems. We may not understand for that moment. Many times when I speak, it may be very hard and harsh upon people, but you may not understand then. But as the days go by, you will know what it is coming. The Lord wants to preserve life. That's all it is. The Lord wants to preserve life. When you go through certain problems, when you go through certain things. don't even right don't even think of it lord why this for me lord why am i going through why people are like this why people are doing this to me why people are saying this to me why our own people are doing this and all these things right but god is doing for a purpose that he wanted to preserve life he wanted to preserve life he wanted to separate 
that which is evil, that which is bad, and then you want to put those that which are good. All those that are good. So for that reason, he takes us in a in certain things, certain ways, that we need to go through certain form. But everything must need to be before the presence of God. Everything must be before the presence of God. All things must come to the presence of God. And from there only you choose what is good, what is bad. Everything will be in the presence of God only. Nowhere he can separate that, but only in the presence of God. Let's turn our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 24 and we'll read that and then we'll close. Jeremiah chapter 24 from verse 1. The Lord showed me. Ah, who is that the Lord showed me? Who is that the Lord is about to you? Speaking to Jeremiah, ah, the Lord showed me. And behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. Ah, what were the two baskets of figs were set before where? Now look at that. Why before the temple of the Lord? There were two baskets that were set before the temple of the Lord. Right? Then what happened next? Uh. After that, uh. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away uh. captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, uh. and the princess of Judah with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem uh. and had brought them to Babylon. Oh, uh, and had brought them to Babylon. Uh. One basket had very good figs. Ah, one basket has very good figs. Even like the figs that are first ripe. Ah. And the other basket had very naughty figs. Ah, naughty figs. Ah. Which could not be eaten. Ah, which could not be eaten. Ah. They were so bad. They are so bad. Then said the Lord unto me. Then said the Lord unto me. What sayest thou, Jeremiah? Ah, Lord says, what is what sayest thou, Jeremiah? And I said. Ah, and I said. And I said, he said what? Figs. Ah, figs. The good figs very good, uh, and the evil very uh, evil. Very evil. That cannot be eaten. Uh, they are so evil. They are so evil. <laughs> this is not a, they cannot be eaten. They are, what, what kind of figs they are? Evil. No, naughty figs. Naughty. <laughs> yeah. When well, if somebody says you are naughty, that means you are evil. <laughs> if you call Jaden, you are a naughty guy, and that he is very evil. Don't call naughty next time. <laughs> huh? There are naughty figs are there. Okay? They are very evil. There are good figs, there are naughty figs. Then read, continue. Then we will close here. Huh? Again the word of the Lord came unto me. Again the word of the Lord came unto me. Saying, huh? Thus said the Lord, huh? the God of Israel, huh? like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, uh -huh. whom I have sent out of this place into the land of Chaldeans for their good. For their good, yes. Uh -huh. Now they are captive for the reason that their God has brought them to Babylon, for their good. Right now, tell them. Uh -huh. For I will set my eyes upon them for, uh -huh. good. for good. And I will bring them again to this land, uh -huh. and I will build them. Uh -huh. and them down uh -huh. and I will plant them and not pluck them up. Yeah, that's all. There may be situations that we also be like the children of Judah, even Judah, the princes of Judah, that we become captive in the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. The Lord is telling to Jeremiah, you good look, go and see there is another there the, the good baskets and the bad basket. Right? They're good figs and then they're naughty figs. No, the Lord says, no, these good figs, those that are, I bought them for a purpose. I'm not going to pluck them out. For a reason. They're captive. There is no doubt. They're captive. But I will never pluck them out. Look, read, read that verse. Okay. They're good. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 5. Verse 5. Thus said the Lord, mm. the God of Israel, mm. like these good figs, ah, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah. I will acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah. Sishnara, the Lord says that I will acknowledge them that are carried away the captive of Judah. Ah. Whom I have sent out of this place into the land of Chaldeans. Ah, whom the Lord himself is saying, whom I have sent out 
of this place into the land of Chaldeans for their good. See that? For their good. Even Joseph also was sent to Egypt for the good of the family to preserve life. God's plans are different. God's ways are different. Yeah. Right? God's ways are different. But all these things are taken out from the church. These baskets were where? They were before the temple. They were set before the temple. Those are good figs. They are taken out of here for the good. For the purpose, God wants to preserve life. The bad ones, we don't need to read those. You can read it at home. But God wants to preserve life. This little thought that you keep it in yourselves. No matter what we go through in our lives, we may feel like we are in captivity. Right? We may feel like we are in prison. Our lives may go through such a, so many things, so many problems. Doesn't matter, some people can say, some people cannot say. Some people, they hide themselves. Right? They cannot come out, even in that situation, but you need to understand the Lord has a plan to bring good out of it. The Lord is making you to go through certain things so that He may preserve your life. That's all, very simple. Very I don't want to go to another thing, but only thing because we are very short of time. So the Lord wants to preserve life. That is very important. He wants to preserve you and me. He doesn't want us to be destroyed. But don't feel when you go through certain problems, certain things, that God is bringing so many things in our lives. Why God is bringing this in our life? Why these things are happening? Why these things are going on? Why these things for me only? Look at, remember Joseph. Right? That's why many people have the name Joseph. <laughs> many people, when you remember Joseph, the name Joseph means you have to remember this story. The Lord took him there to preserve life. Joseph what? Joseph is for what? To preserve life. What is Joseph used for? Huh? Joseph is taken to Egypt. Why? God made, God used Joseph to preserve the life. What does that mean? Under water, okay, problems are there. Okay, okay, problems are there. Only one person have problem. One person go through certain things. So I'm thinking with our Lord Jesus Christ. He came through, he went through the cross of Calvary to preserve the life of all the whole world. Like Joseph was taken to Egypt to preserve life, even our Lord Jesus Christ has been taken to cross to preserve life. To preserve the life that which is good. There are two baskets. There is one good, good basket, naughty baskets. Right? The two types of figs. One good figs and then one naughty figs. But God wants to preserve those that are His. Those that are His. I will not pluck them out. I will keep them. I will restore them. I will take care of them. So with this thought, just remember, God hath given Himself to preserve the life of mankind on this earth. The Lord was, the Lord sent Joseph to Egypt to preserve the chosen, the, to preserve the figs that are good baskets, not the naughty figs, those that are of good. We may not understand for that moment, but God knows it. His plans are awesome. His plans are different. His ways are different. So the Lord may help us, the Lord may strengthen us. Right? So please do listen to them.